The world is looking for alternate energy sources and one of the key ones that's been explored is hydrogen. We're going to take a look at that for the aviation industry in this episode of In The Hangar. Hi everyone, welcome to In The Hangar, special In The Hangar. We're on location at AirVenture at the Flying Eyes booth. I'm Dan Milliken. And I'm Christy Wong. Today's episode is brought to you by our awesome sponsor, Flying Eyes. If you're here, stop by the booth, give them our discount code, Taking Off, and they'll hook you up with 10% off. 10% off. And if you're not here, you can also find it online. And speaking of online, we also are sponsored by Colton Mortgage. So go online at Colton Taking Off if you're looking for that mortgage or refi and uh, run by pilots. And another sponsor run by, run by pilot is Marshall Protective Services. We love our sponsors. We do love our sponsors. And you know what else we love? We love fuel for our airplanes. Fuel for our airplanes. And with us is Dr. Anita Sengupta. Thank you so much for coming. Did Thank I say you for that right? Me. Yes. Okay, good, good. <laughs> okay, so Dr. Anita, uh, you are on the forefront of the search for hydrogen as a replacement for the fossil fuels. Can you tell us a little bit about yourself and then uh, lead into you know how your, your background has led you to the hydrogen? Well, sure. I found hydrogen very early in my career because I'm an aerospace engineer by training, and my very first job actually was working for Boeing on oh. the development of launch vehicles, which were fueled by liquid hydrogen and liquid oxygen. Uh, but yeah, all my degrees in aerospace engineering, and the majority of that was in the space program. What got you interested in aerospace engineering? You're a fascinating person, by the way. <laughs> oh, well, I'm a very nerdy person as well, but I oh think- Oh my gosh, I, <laughs> good, <I'm> same. <laughs> well, I'm a huge science fiction fan, so I think what really got me interested in it was my love of science fiction since a little kid, and fascination with space travel, fascination of other worlds, potentially finding alien civilizations, and wanting to facilitate that. Perfect, see, I love that. Okay, so um, hydrogen. Let's talk about that, because that's kind of like this new wave thing coming, right? How does hydrogen work as an energy source? Well, there's two ways that you can extract energy from hydrogen. One is by combustion, which is how it's used in launch vehicles, which is liquid hydrogen, liquid oxygen. And the other is an electrochemical way, which is using a fuel cell. And in our implementation, a proton exchange membrane fuel cell. And the real benefit of hydrogen is its energy density. So it's got about three times the energy density, which is energy per unit mass, as compared to Jet A. Okay, is it dangerous? So it is obviously flammable, it is combustible, uh, but as is gasoline, as is 100 say. LL, as is mm -hmm. Avgas, so it's about how you store it, how you treat it, how you manage it. And in many ways, and we can talk about this in detail, there are aspects of using hydrogen in the way that you could conceivably vent it on overboard if you had an engine out, where it actually makes it safer because you wouldn't even have explosion potential on the ground, as you would with gasoline, Avgas, or Jet A. So what are we talking about in terms of like utilizing this? Are we talking like GA aircraft, jets? What is the what does this look like for you guys? So a hydrogen fuel cell technology is still an air breathing system because you do require oxygen to complete the electrochemical reaction. So we can actually, hook up my warrior then, right? Um, are we going to throw some hydrogen in the warrior and call it a day? Um, I, that would be good. It has to do a little bit of retrofitting in order to make that happen. But we think that it's better to start with smaller aircraft and lower altitude aircraft as a means well, of getting the product I in. am a smaller, lower altitude aircraft. So. Well, you talk about it, it having fuel cells and storing. So is it like the... Um, like the solar, like the electric uh, vehicles, and you have to have heavy batteries and stuff like that? It's quite different. Um, and so I like to refer to a hydrogen fuel cell as a hydrogen ion battery as compared to a lithium ion battery. But I can talk you through the process of how the fuel cell works, if that would help. Well, is, is it lighter than you know, lithium batteries. Oh, it's significantly lighter. So when you look at the specific energy that you get for, let's say, a three to five hour endurance aircraft, you get 10 times uh, the performance so in why, terms of endurance. Why don't we see that right now, like across the board in a mass situation? So we are starting to see it in the automotive sector. So I myself own a hydrogen fuel cell car in California. Are able to refuel it? It's commercially available. There are three different companies that make them. And I think in general in the aviation space, bringing in new technology takes more time. Yeah. So we're only starting to see the first experimental implementations of battery powered aircraft as well as with us, hydrogen fuel cell powered aircraft. I would like to put myself up as a volunteer <laughs> and a warrior because that sounds amazing. And we would like to. That's actually why we're at Oshkosh is that we want to have an initial implementation with our governmental program 
program. We're actually funded by the Air Force and the AppWorks Agility Prime program for governmental use cases, but we also want to service the experimental aircraft community. Gotcha. Well, I'm not experimental, I was going to say. I'm well, a but it's working right now. Um, well, so we have a design, we're working through the design, we'll have our first flight demonstration okay. in the first quarter of next year, um, and that's the engineering process, right? You have to go through the design, detailed right. design, but we have our aircraft, it's been stripped down, it's being built up now, we have all the parts, and so it's an issue of going through the design process, going through the approval process, and doing our first flight tests. Once the technology is there, um, talk me through the, the, the timeline for the short-term future, the next year, two years, three years. So the product that we actually have under development is for Piper Archer um, oh, okay. uh, class of aircraft. A twenty eight, <laughs> exactly, which is what we have. You need to stop by our booth at Hangar D. <laughs> All right. Um, so that would work for you, but there is an STC process that you have to go through. So it makes sense to actually work with the experimental community first and get it into a range of platforms, which will build more hours on the platform, which helps us, and then also to complete the STC with the FAA. It effectively helps you prove yourself, but you can do that easier in the experimental. That makes sense. Exactly, but we. So so we, right now we do have a Piper Archer, which obviously was certificated, which now since we've stripped it, is now going to be fly experimental. I would like to that airplane, actually. Yeah. For sure. Uh, you're, and you know, I think, uh, but the point is, I think our business model would be to support people like you, aircraft owners and operators who would Absolutely. like to become emission free. That would be great. What's the biggest obstacle stopping hydrogen from taking over? So definitely the infrastructure side of things is a challenge. So just like you saw with you know lithium ion battery cars, you have to have charging stations so that people could be able to charge when they're going from point A to point B. Just about to ask that. It's not like you could stop in the middle of Missouri, fuel At up an and FBO, keep going. Yeah, know, exactly. Get well, what is fueling like? I mean, is it like liquid hydrogen that you pour into the airplane? So there are two different ways to do it. One is with high pressure gaseous hydrogen, which is how I fuel my car, which is how all the ground-based vehicles are designed. But in order to give you the payload margin that you want and the endurance that you want for an aircraft, which has its gross takeoff weight limitation, it does have to be liquid hydrogen. Liquid hydrogen actually happens to be easier to fuel and to transport in many ways. There are some things which are more difficult, such as the thermal environment. Um, but those are the two options that you have available to you. What well, we're doing liquid. What would the cost be like compared to Avgas or Jet A for having hydrogen? So there are pricing structures for hydrogen now. There's gray hydrogen, which is a hydrogen which has been produced by a hydrocarbon reforming process, which is the cheapest. There's green hydrogen, which is what we actually have in Los Angeles, which is about $7 per kilogram if you buy it directly from like a provider of hydrogen. And at the pump, you're paying roughly $16 per kilogram. But when you compare the cost per mile because of the energy efficiency of hydrogen and the energy efficiency of the hydrogen fuel cell, it's actually cheaper to fuel your hydrogen fuel cell car than it is your gasoline power car because of the price of gas. Right that now. was my next question, so thank you for <laughs> anticipating that. <laughs> okay, well, that, that's fascinating, and I guess we can look forward to um, hydrogen-powered airplanes in the near future. Is it greener? It is oh. way greener because the way the fuel cell works is the hydrogen gas is disassociated into hydrogen ions which flow through a polymer electrolyte combined with oxygen ions which come from the air and produce an exhaust product which is water. So the only product, your only emission is water. That sounds terrible. So you can do a lot of <laughs> flying over the desert and you can... Exactly, we can seed the clouds when we... Yeah. <laughs> Just well, Dr. Anita, thank you so much for coming and uh, enlightening us. I, w I was very intrigued when I heard about this because I know that, that they've been working on hydrogen as a, as a green alternative to the carbon and fossil fuel uh, energy sector. So I, it, I've learned a lot. Yeah, same here. Thank you so much. And thank you for having me. All right, awesome. Well, thank you guys so much for watching. If you like what you see, like, subscribe, and share our content, and we'll see you next time. In the hangar.